What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp overview video for you. So I talk a lot about extensions, so I've used a bunch of them, but I wanted to make a quick video about five that I think that you should have installed on your computer at all times. So these are extensions, or in one case a tool, that you can use to do a lot of different simple things in SketchUp that are going to make your life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and jump into it and see if your favorite made the list. Extension one is called Selection Memory, and you can download it from the SketchUp extension warehouse. Basically what it does is it lets you save the last five selection sets. So if you've ever had a situation where you're trying to select a whole bunch of different edges, like this, and then you've accidentally clicked off of it, and lost that selection, you know how frustrating that can be. Because then you have to go back and you have to do all the clicking again, right? Well, what this extension does is it saves your last five selection sets inside of SketchUp. So all you have to do is just go up to Edit, Cycle Previous Selections, and what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to cycle through those different selections so that you can get the one back that you were working on. So for me, what I've done is I've mapped that to the keyboard shortcut D. So now all I have to do is just tap a key in order to get that back. So for example, if I come in here and I click on this, this, and I had these selections over here, if I just tap the D key, what it's gonna do is it's gonna cycle through those previous selections that I had in here. So I can really quickly get that back um, so that I don't have to go back and re-click and reselect and all of that stuff. And so the next extension is one that we've talked about a number of different times on the channel, and it really expands the selection tools functionality. So Selection Toys is a free extension from TomTom that basically gives you the ability to filter your selections by different things. So for example, let's say that we wanted to select the perimeter of this object. Well, what we could do is we could select this whole thing and then Selection Toys comes with a menu in here where you can filter your selections. So you can either deselect or select only different objects inside of your selections. So for example, let's say I wanted to get the border edges of this object, I could just do a select only border edges and it's gonna select those edges. So in addition, it also allows you to filter things out. So let's say we had this cube right here. Well, let's say we were to right click and do a select only faces. You could use this to select only the faces inside of the object and then you could delete them out. So if you delete them out, notice how you're left with this cool grid that's in here. And so it also comes with a toolbar, which I rarely use, but the toolbar is customizable. So you can go into the Tools Selection Toys settings, and under the UI settings, you can turn different tools on and off. But this also gives you a good idea of some things that you can use this to select. So you can use this to select all text, all guide points, um, things that are considered ingons or polygons. Um, you can use this to select only softened edges, so you can unsoften them. So for example, let's say that we were to bring this sphere over. So we'll bring this over here. And so let's say we were to go into our hidden geometry, like this, and select this. You could right click and you could use this so that this only selects your softened edges and then you could jump in here and you could unsoften them really quickly. So you know how before what you would have to do is you would have to come in here and you would have to select these manually. Well you can use this to filter this out so that you're selecting only your soft edges or only your edges in general and so you can quickly unsoften and soften. So this selection tool set gives you a lot of different options for different things you can do inside of SketchUp. All right, so another issue that a lot of people have inside of SketchUp is when the texture resolutions inside of their SketchUp models um, are making their model run really slow. So um, SketchUp doesn't handle the high resolution textures super well. Um, it's not really supposed to, it's not really designed to do that, but sometimes you'll get stuff where people bring in high resolution images and place them in your model. And those can be really hard to track down. So these are three images that I've brought in at different resolutions from the website Polyhaven. So they're free textures that I downloaded, but you can see how they look pretty much identical, right? So if you look at them, visually speaking, unless you're doing like a rendering or something like that, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference. The problem with that is one of these is four times the size 
of the others in here and you can't really tell what it is. So Material Resizer is a free extension that was made available by SketchUp to allow you to go through and see the resolution of the texture images inside your models. And so you can download this from the SketchUp extension warehouse, but basically what it does is you just run the Material Resizer extension and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a list of the texture images that are contained inside your model. And you can see how one of these the one on the left has a resolution of 1024 by 1024, or a size of 1024 by 1024. On the other hand, the one on the right hand side is four times the size. So that means that it's gonna be four times the memory and it's gonna it's gonna take up four times the hard drive space and it's really gonna slow down your SketchUp model four times as much, which makes sense. So what we're gonna do and it's also gonna slow down your SketchUp model. So what we're gonna do though, is this extension also allows you to resize these materials. So this 4K material, for example, all I would have to do is just enter a new size. So I'm just gonna enter an, a 1024 and click on go. What that's gonna do, it's gonna pop up a little window here and basically it's gonna run a script that reduces the size of that material. Well now, both my 4K and my 1K are in here as 1024 by 1024. Notice how the quality, um, I mean, the quality has been reduced in the sense that this isn't as high of a resolution of texture anymore, but it didn't reduce it to the point where you can really tell the difference unless you're doing close-up renderings or something like that. So I recommend installing this and running it on any models that you get from anyone else because you can really speed up your SketchUp models using this extension. One of the things that can be a little bit frustrating inside of a SketchUp model is trying to zoom around inside of spaces, right? So it's really easy to zoom in and get like stuck in walls like this. So what you wanna do is you wanna zoom into this space, but then you're zooming into a wall and scrolling and sometimes you kinda of pop out of the wall in places that you don't expect. Um, it can just be a little bit frustrating trying to navigate in those situations when you're scrolling up. However, with the extension Curic Zoom Through, what this will do is this will automatically zoom you or move you through those objects to the other side of the wall. So this is a free extension, so I will link to it in the notes down below. Um, you get it through Curic's Gumroad page. Note that he's noted name a fair price in here. You can put zero in here and download this for free. If you do wanna support what Curic is doing, you can also pay him a little bit of money for the extension. But um, basically the way that it works is it's fairly simple. It just brings this little, uh, uh, this little toggle up right here and then once you use the toggle now if you zoom close to a wall it's just gonna move you to the other side of the wall so if I zoom into this wall right here see how it's just gonna zoom me through I'm not gonna get stuck in walls anymore so it it basically sets your camera up so that it's not gonna get stuck in walls when you're trying to navigate around you'll automatically jump through those walls to the other side of the walls. So notice how this allows me to move into these different spaces really easily. All right, so then the last extension, it's a little bit misleading because it's not really an extension, but rather it's a tool for managing your material image files and your model files. So as you know, you can create different folders and other things like that for SketchUp in order to manage your materials, but it can be a little bit clunky. Um, same with adding um, different model libraries and things like that. So you can do it, but again, it's just a little bit clunky. Well, I like using this external tool called Connector. So Connector is a free tool that you can download in order to manage your different assets. And it's literally a tool that's designed to help you model or uh, to manage your 3D model files, your materials, um, some other stuff for rendering as well. But like I said, it's a free download that you can install on your computer. And basically the way that it works is it allows you to filter by file type. So for example, mine links to my different folders in my assets folder. And what I can do is I can come in here and I can find all of my different materials or my different objects that are in here. What makes this really powerful is the way that it sorts. So what you can do, for example, is right now this is showing image files in addition to my 3D model files. Well, I can just click right here in order to turn that off. So now 
I'm just showing the 3D model files on here. Well, within my 3D model files, notice how I'm still getting some other files like OBJs that are in here for other programs. Well, if I just wanna see my SketchUp model files, I can just click the little drop down right here and just filter just for SketchUp models. So I can turn the others off so I can just see the SketchUp models that'll, that are in here. And so what's cool about that is you can then use this in order to bring those models into SketchUp. So let's say for example that I wanted to bring one of these sofas in that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse and saved in my library. Well, all I would have to do is just find that sofa file and just drag it into SketchUp. So you can use this to manage all of those different files really quickly. Um, so you can use this to save your different material. You can use this to save your different model files and other things like that. You could also do the same thing for your material images if you wanted to. So for example, um, let's say I wanted to apply this wood floor in here. Well, you could take this and you could drag, like let's say we wanted this wood floor in here. You could drag it in. Well, it'll bring it in as an image file, right? So it's an image file that's currently sitting on the floor of my model. Well, what I could do is I could just sample that and then I could apply it to the floor. So, and you would have to come in here and like make sure that the size is correct, obviously, but, but you can use this in order to keep track of all of your different materials and then bring them into SketchUp really quickly without having to go through the whole like material setup process. So I find this to be a very valuable piece of my workflow. Usually what I'll do is I'll pop it up on a separate monitor and then if I just need to bring something in, I can just drag it over. All right, so let me know what you think the must have extensions for SketchUp are. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some more detailed videos about a couple of these um, on this page. Um, if you're interested in learning more about SketchUp, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course. That's gonna be my course where I teach you how to use SketchUp from start to finish. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.